Okay, our next problem asks us what is the domain of art can function. Now, this is actually a trick question. It has a, a couple, a couple of tricky. There was a couple of tricky parts to it. So, um, I guess you can have all the domain ranges of the trick functions memorized. But if not, let me try to walk you through the process of how to find the domain of R k of x from the beginning. Then, next time when you encounter similar questions, you can just quickly reason your way through instead of like memorizing the entire thing. Although if you would like, you could also memorize the entire chart of the domain and ranges of the tan of the cosine sine tan and arc cosine arc sine arc tan and the cotangent cosecant and cosine and secant functions. Mm -hmm. All right, let me try to explain to you. So what we want to know is we want to know the domain of arc tangent. So first, what we want to know that we want to know we probably should know that the domain and ranges of the tangent function. We know that the arc tangent function is the inverse of the tangent function. And that is kind of why you want to know the domain and ranges of the tangent function. Let me quickly draw you the tangent function. Okay, so the tangent function, um, I'm just drawing the tangent function on Desmos. And Desmos is a online graphical software that is free. I really, I mean, they didn't pay me to say this, but I really like using it because it's just really convenient. I also have a graphic calculator, but if you also own a graphic calculator, you you kind of know that it's kind of like slow. I mean, it's not like slow, but it's got to press all those buttons on like a bulky calculator because it's graphic and it's programmable, so it's really big. It's just not as convenient as using like a graphic computer, a graphic um, software online, because then you can just quickly type in um, the graph you wanted to do and you can you know you can you can just like do your homework and see kind of visualize um, the solutions qu much quicker but they don't have as many as much many functions or as any many functionalities as the um, graphical calculators but it's just um, more convenient if you need to do something very quickly all right so let's see the domain of um, tangent of x so so, so so or let's look at the graph of the tangent of function or the tangent of x so we have the tangent function here and as we see look see this function this tangent function it passes the vertical line test which is perfect because it's a tangent function and it should pass the vertical line test however it doesn't pass the horizontal line test so if i just draw any horizontal line over here so let's just draw the line of y equals six so we have a horizontal line here or let's zoom in a bit zoom out a bit so we have a horizontal line here and you can see that it intersects the function it's the our line here a horizontal line here intersects the um, tangent function at multiple places that means that the tangent function fails our horizontal line test so the tangent function is not a one-to-one -one function which means that the tangent function does not have an inverse but we what we want our arc tangent function. We have our arc tangent function. So how did that happen? They, they, what, what what we did, or what the mathematician did, is that they did something like domain restriction. So they actually restricted the domain of the tangent function to, to um, between uh, pi over two and negative pi over two. Or I guess let's do this to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. So let's look at those um, area covered in purple. So they, in order to, to for um, the arc tangent function to have an inverse, they restricted the domain of the tangent function, or sorry, in order for the arc tangent function to exist, so in order for the tangent function to have an inverse, mathematicians restricted the um, domain of the tangent function 
So right now, if we check again, the arctangent function is actually only the inverse of the area of the tangent function highlighted in purple. And now, let's try to have horizontal line again, and you see that only the area in purple, if, you, if we only consider the area that's highlighted in purple, this passes, this function passes the horizontal line test, so it's a one-to-one -one function that could have an inverse. So that is why the domain or that is why um, the dom the that's it was why we the the range because the dom is the because we restricted the domain of the tangent function, which means the range of the arctangent function is just restricted because arctangent is the inverse of tan, so you flip the domain and the range. So we know that the range of the arctangent function of arctan is restricted. Is restricted. So like it's between negative pi over two and and pi over two. How so? This is the range of the arctangent function. However, a question didn't ask about the range. It asked about the domain. What is the domain of the arctangent function? The domain of the arctangent function is the range of the tangent function, uh, which is the y value which is basically the, all the values that the y of the tangent function could take on. And in here, we can see our graph our vertically goes up forever and then goes down forever. So our range, the range of the tangent function can take on any value. So similarly, after we flip it over to get to the inverse of the tangent function, which is the arctan function, the, 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 the domain of the arctan function can take on any value, can take on uh, any value, or just written in shorthand, we can just say the domain is in is from R to R, which just means, or let's just say it's in R, which just means that um, the domain can take on any value, or you can just say something like it's it's the domain is any real number, or it's any real number. Um, I'll just do it on the shorthand. So yes, this is how we find the domain of the arc tangent x of x. And if you're asked for a range, you you know that it's between negative pi over two and pi over two. But all you need to memorize is actually just the fact that uh, you need a one to one function in order for the you need a one to one function in order for a function to have an inverse. And the domain and range of the tangent function is just fl the f is flipped over to get to the domain and range of the arc tangent function. So yeah, this is basically um, the domain of the arc tangent function. And let's look at a sample solution here. Yes, they talked about the inverse and one to one, and the domain of the tangent function and the range of arc tangent function. So let's just say the solution is correct. And adding a graph would illustrate the concept better. Also consider give more explanation on the domain of arctan. Because you talked a ton about the range of the arctan without talking a lot about the domain function. They just talk go do 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 talk about range and then when it gets to the domain. They just had one sentence, which is can be a little bit of conf confusing, in my opinion. If um, yeah, if the you know, so yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly charge my laptop because it's running out of power. Perfect. Now let's look at our next problem, and our next problem asks us about finding the value of sine of x. Actually, it is 4.46 at the moment. Um, it's already half, half an hour, so I think I should call it a day now. Yes, it has been already half an hour. Time goes by so quickly. So yeah, I guess I should end my live stream here because I don't want to go over time. But um, thank you for coming today, and I hope you enjoyed our problem-solving problem sessions together. If you liked our videos, please hit subscribe to the One Class channel. And my name is Chang, and I hope to see you again in the future live streams. So have a great day, and bye-bye.